Howdy, howdy. Uh, so I just want to confirm that we are live. It says starting, so I don't know what that means. But while it says that. While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do... Oh, there we are. I'm live. Okay. Hello. Um, yeah, I just figured I'd go live for a couple minutes tonight just to talk about the CES that was. You know, I'm, I'm not even sure how I'll share my screen, but I want to show you video of me trying out some of the new Vive Tracker demos uh, that they had showing at the HTC Vive area of CES because they were quite fun and cool. Um, so we're going to talk about that and sort of trends in terms of VR for 2017 that I saw at CES and keep this kind of like a more focused video on that. Uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I really want to know what you guys think. Um, even if you're watching this after the fact and you have uh, questions or comments based on what I'm saying, um, please do uh, Feel free to uh, shout them out in the comments and make sure you subscribe and like the video uh, in any event. And right now, I am going to see about uh, using this to uh, duplicate my screen so that I can... That's my dog, Lily, wandering around happily, by the way. Um, so that I can show you some of the videos that I took. Oh, come on. I hope I'm able to do that. If not, I'm really just going to be very low res and do it from my phone. I should have taken more time to prepare, but I didn't have that time. Uh, I would have loved to. But this is me just trying to make an attempt to do some more live videos and put out some more content regularly. I know that I've been a little sparse, um, and I feel like it's it's a better thing if I continue to put stuff out there uh, as opposed to just sort of wait until it's perfect like I have. Um, frankly, too often of late, hard to get stuff going. You know, sometimes you just got to ship it. That is a product management principle, by the way. Just ship it. Just get it out there. Great is the enemy of good. Sometimes you just got to ship stuff. You got to do it in non-scalable ways. Wow, I'm a ball of Silicon Valley truisms, aren't I? My gosh, it's somewhat depressing, but uh, I digress. Okay, so now I got some videos up from CES. This is me ghetto rigging my own, uh, you know, possible mobile solution for... Uh, <laughs> for VR with a Google Daydream and a Vive controller. You don't even need a Vive tracker. You just need a game that recognizes this as a game object, and then you can have stereoscopic vision attached to that, and you can literally have a mobile Vive headset. I'm thinking of pushing that out to uh, the Google Play Store in the next couple of days, actually. I hope it doesn't... I, 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 hope, uh, I hope I'm able to actually do that. Uh, but before I even do that... Oh, and here's another view of it. It really works, and it requires no extra attachments. I feel like I'm giving a sales pitch for something here. I nerdily did this and never posted a video about how to do it. Um, if you want me to post a video of that, just let me know in the comments. If you've got a Daydream View thing and you want to sort of jerry-rig it like this, I used no extra stuff. I just threw a Vive controller on there, and one of the projects from CES, which I will show you momentarily, inspired me to do so. Um, and that was, well, first of all, this is a gun that I used at CES. Well, now I'm just going through a picture slideshow. Um, you may have seen this in the thumbnail. This is me justifying myself putting that in the thumbnail for this video because I was lazy, but also there's a real reason. You see that in the corner there? There's a little Vive Puck tracker thing. And that is um, being used in concert with Bluetooth to recognize this peripheral. The peripheral is this gun that um, appears in the game world. I think I might even have a video of this. Oh yeah, there's me mean mugging. Just... Just a little mean mugging. You, you got a mean mug when you have a gun. Makes you feel so much more powerful than you are. I don't like guns. Just want to throw that out there. But, um, okay, actually, you know what? The first video that came up is the first video that I'm going to show. And it's actually me doing um, a professional <laughs> batting situation. Now, I was never taught, because I'm a lefty, how to bat. Um, so this is me attempting to bat in virtual reality. Yeah, it's pretty sad. I was actually trying to bunt. I just wanted to hit a ball because in this demo, you're actually pitching against a... I'm going to turn the sound off and use this as if it's like a floating window, which it most certainly is not. But I'm going to use it like that. So basically in this demo, there's a Vive tracker on the bottom of what seems to be a real bat. And I guess it, can, it doesn't attach to it via Bluetooth. It's just a recognized game object. 
Um, but it uses the, the Vive Tracker little puck accessory. They don't like it when you call them a pu it a puck, but it is that. And you can pitch against um, simulations of what real pitchers here. You can see my field of view there. If this will ever focus. Come on, camera. Come on, buddy. Anyway, you can kind of see like a blurry cam view of the field. And at the other end, there you go. At the other end, there's a pitcher that is a simulation of a real Japanese pitcher and the exact pitches that he's given before. And so in this demo, you can pitch against real pitchers and you can judge how well or how poorly you did. Um, one of the things I was there talking up with my day job, which is IBM Watson, is interactive speech and how that might make sense in a demo like this. Well, it makes perfect sense because you can't even use your hands. And right now, I don't know if you can see this, but the mechanism by which I am able to call up a menu is I have to look to the left and stay focused until a ring is full. But when you're batting and your body's into it, it doesn't feel natural to do that. So it's, <laughs> I don't think I'm enjoying it too much in that video. So that, <laughs> that's one of the demos. This is a person's face. I just think it's funny. Sorry. I like that guy actually. But um, this is somebody else playing with the gun in the actual game, the one that I showed you right at the top. Uh, that does connect via Bluetooth. Now, why does it connect via Bluetooth? Why does it need the Vive Tracker? Um, not just for positional tracking, but also when you press the button and there's some fun mechanisms for like reloading. It really feels like some sort of future, like you're picking up a gun from Aliens or from uh, what's the what's the the Colonial something or others thing? Ah, I forget. But um, this was actually our demo, which we were showing off at, at the booth. I had this built um, to showcase interactive speech and virtual reality. What I noticed was not many people are uh, using the microphone, and every virtual reality headset has one, even mobile ones, especially mobile ones, right, because they're phones. And so the Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, the PlayStation VR has a microphone in it, and so do the cameras. Um, but you're not able to really interact with these virtual worlds um, with your voice very often, but you could very easily do so with a, a cloud-based platform, especially like Watson. And Watson has a Unity SDK, which is the most popular development environment for virtual reality. So you could use Watson in virtual reality uh, very easily if you're building a your game from within Unity and also from Unreal and other engines as well. It's a simple API call to speech to text and our conversation service. Watson Conversation lets you train a bot. But basically there's a number of different angles this could take. It doesn't have to be a chat bot. It could be an interactive experience. And this one, which you can download from Viveport, it's called the IBM Speech Sandbox. Um, I had this built to showcase how you can actually create, modify, and destroy objects with your voice. And there's a how-to guide. Um, I don't mean to get too salesy on this. Jeez. But basically, you can rebuild it yourself. Um, you can check it out if you want to. It's in HTC's App Store Vive ports, um, freely available for download. And it's meant for developers, but it showcases how you could, like I could say, create a big green dragon. I don't know if you can see what the guy's doing, but um, you could say create a big green dragon and have him uh, and have a dragon that's big and green, populate the world. And you could also modify it and say, create a small blue dragon or destroy. There's a few different intents and you could expand the system, but it's just kind of showing what's possible, right? So let me see if I can get to another video that I actually want to show you, uh, which is kind of fun. Ah, yes, this one. So this is me in a fire suit. <laughs> and this is kind of um, another area that I noticed uh, voice could play a more prominent role, training for uh, dangerous jobs. So. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is me taking a tour. I'll, I'll show you a video I took later of me in the fire suit. But this is me just kind of touring all the different bays and showing what people are showing up. Kind of surreal. It really is like the future's here and like everyone's kind of nuts. And we're just treating this like it's normal when really it's kind of weird and nerdy, but also awesome. Um, I think this is only 28 seconds long, but this is kind of a visual tour of their whole booth. They were showing off a bunch of accessories that are officially blessed to work with the Vive Tracker. Their latest phones, of course. There's the new head strap and the wireless thing for the headset. And there's the gun peripheral. And there's the baseball bat with the puck on the bottom. There's any number of ways in which... And there's the fire hose, which I'll show you me using in just a second. I like the new strap. I want to get it. I love the wireless thing. It works perfectly, actually. Um, I didn't notice a single stutter, except when I bent down. Because you have to put the little power source in your pocket. It's almost like wearing a microphone. The only time I noticed, I didn't even notice that it was wireless. Um, was when I bent down and then it broke. Um, something to do with the wires, but hopefully they'll get that ironed out. I didn't notice any lat latency, and apparently it's uncompressed signal, so you're not losing any fidelity when you do it. Um, this is an image of me in the fire suit. So yeah, you can see how crazy you can get with accessories now. So that's a puck at the end of this fire hose, but the fire hose has kickback. When you pull it, because it's connected via Bluetooth, 
it sends the signal to the game to like uh, do stuff in the game. So water comes out in the game, and you're supposed to put out this living room. Let me see if I can find you a video. Um, yeah, here's a video of me doing it. It's about eight seconds long. I made the, the demo guy take a video of me. Par for the course, right? Let me share sound, because this is pretty funny. You'll notice that I get kicked back physically when I turn it on. And it really, it transports you pretty thoroughly. So the suit also was hot. So it got hot when I got close to the fire. Really crazy immersive stuff. That's really only possible with a Vive Tracker because of the Bluetooth connection or connectivity. I don't know if you can see. You can twist that nozzle and make it come out more hard or slower. And yeah, see, I, I got pulled back, so I had to turn it off. And it, it like pulls you back like a real one would. It's really cool. Um, and then let me see if I have a final video of... Anything fun, like me using the gun, which I thought I had, but maybe I don't have. And I may... Did he take a video of this? Uh, no, he didn't. But this is somebody else playing the demo that I had built. Um, so let's see if we can get a sample, like, create a dragon thing. Oh, that's just people dancing. This is at the end of the game, at the end of the day. Everyone was a little loopy. Trippy loopy. These are my words. These are the words. Um, yeah, so I don't know. If there's something that... Um, so in terms of trends, what did I notice? I noticed that wireless is going to be a thing this year. I feel like the technology is ready. It's ready already um, I, for, for, for virtual reality. So pretty soon we're going to be untethered, even if we don't have backpacks on. Um, what The way that the TP cast solution worked is it put an extra like detection system here and it needs line of sight. It's ultra wide band. It's not um, Intel's solution, but it's even higher band. Um, and so it needs direct line of sight with the receiver in order to do wireless to whatever system. Um, and so you, you put the, the wireless sender is like on your head, but it needs to be powered by a power source, which is in your pocket. And it's kind of like a mic and it can break a little bit when you bend down and the wires break. It. But it should maintain line of sight at all times, so you should put it up on the wall. Honestly, I didn't notice it. There was no delay, no lag, no compressed signal. It worked great when it worked, and it worked 99% of the time. Uh, but when it broke, it did break a lot, but I would buy it in a heartbeat. I mean, this thing is killer. It adds to the immersion so much, not just to have a gun. Both the demos were together, the gun and the, and the wireless solution, although they're different manufacturers, and then there's the HDC puck. So really, there's sort of three things being shown up, really four when you factor in the game, which you're shooting aliens. But it felt incredible, and it felt like the future, and it felt like the future is here, and there are competing solutions on the market this year. And at least for the vibe, I mean, I think you can get wireless control. I also think that their head strap thing solves a lot of problems that I have with the vibe, where it's head resting on my nose. Um, you don't really need new Vive hardware unless you're going to change the physical hardware configuration significantly, like, for example, expanding the field of view, adding eye tracking ability, and maybe making it higher resolution. Those are the only things that I, I maybe having a built-in headset, but I'm not one of those people that says the headset should be built in. No, I want to bring my own. I want that option. Um, but it would be nice, of course, if they gave me a good option initially. Um, but that's, to me, a nice to have. But yeah, I think this is the year that the headset refinements are going to come out, that the wireless stuff is going to come out. And I also noticed this is the year that I really think that um, some common rubrics around uh, app experience and also game development for virtual realities and best practices are going to be standardized. Like the local motion problem is going to be solved more clearly. It hasn't been yet. Right now, people are doing... Um, uh, versions of locomotion that have you do just sort of blink teleport in order to re reduce motion sickness. But then some other games, especially for PlayStation VR, like with the launch of Resident Evil 7, they're just making you move around as, with your controller. And they're saying, hey, if you're motion sick, we're going to do some stuff like re reduce the field of view, which helps with that. Um, but you got to move around like a disembodied body because otherwise we're not sure how you would move around the game world. And not really any other solution other than the HTC Vive doesn't have full room tracking. Excuse me. Oof. I, I really do wish I had a video of the Master of Shapes demo. It was by a company called Master of Shapes, um, where they had a, it was a Samsung phone, uh, not that it really matters, and an Android build from Unity of the same game that they were playing in the HTC Vive and walking around in. But when you put it on like a mobile gun accessory, 
it's sort of like a field of view into this world. And you can assist your buddy who's playing like right next to you in the same play space. And I want to see that concept expanded. That's why I showed you what I showed you at the top of this, which is, well, what if you could do that without a Vive Tracker? Why do you need a Vive Tracker for that? You don't. You need to give up control of one of your controllers, put it on the Daydream View, push a build. And I kind of want to wrap this up and put it as sample code on GitHub. Although if somebody's already done this, uh, please let me know um, if you're a Unity developer, for example. Um, because I think it would be really interesting and compelling if you're going to do um, real-time multiplayer, especially local, you could make a really low, uh, low cost second headset out of this. Just put it on your face and you should have the same exact experience as an HTC Vive, albeit lower graphical settings and whatnot when you push the build to Android, of course. So your game has to scale accordingly. You're not gonna be pushing uh, Fallout 4, you know, as a build to your Android phone. Although, hey, who knows, they're catching up. Um, but yeah, big year for VR. I was so encouraged to see so many non-gaming use cases be explored. I mentioned a few of them, but there's one where you learn to resuscitate a baby in VR and you get that muscle memory. And there's one where you learn to, um, uh, do surgery. It's a, it's a surgeon training thing by a guy that actually randomly I went to high school with and I met him there for the first time in like 13 years. And he's, he's like, Hey, how you doing? We went to high school together. I am now a world famous surgeon with children and I'm married and I'm like, you guy. No, I'm kidding. That's not true. Um, it was really a random occurrence. But so they're experimenting with stuff like this and they thought that maybe voice would make a lot of sense for them. Like in real life, they're going to be asking, at least for the foreseeable future, till automation takes over. Ooh. Uh, you know, nurse, hand me scalpel N5. I don't know what the nomenclature is, what the numbering is. But, you know, that's a mechanic that you would learn in real life and you can simulate it and get it into muscle memory and virtual reality if you add interactive speech. I just think Interactive speech makes a whole lot more sense in virtual reality than it ever did in any other medium, including what I'm recording on now, which is a desktop PC, which I also use to play my, my, my PC games. I do have a laptop, and it's a Mac, but, <clears throat> you know, um, I think that, uh, like, uh, Cortana doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. I don't want to talk to my computer. I can type, right? But in virtual reality, when I can see the body, you see the people, quote unquote, around me and I interact with the, a real world, like a fictional world, but in a real way with my voice, in addition to my hands, and also in addition to my body walking around and my eyes seeing and my ears hearing, that is like 20% more immersion, it, depending on how you do it. Now there's some best practices, but this is one of my current areas of obsession, as you can see. Um, but yeah, I don't see any really pressing uh, comments in the uh, in the comment section. So leave me your comments below. Please uh, leave a like to this video if you liked it. Share with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, let me know what you want to see in future videos. I'm going to try to push out more content and do more of it live. Um, and, and I want to do stuff that's interesting to folks. So let me know what you want to see. Uh, let me know what you think of this video and what you think of VR in 2017. What do you think the big trends are going to be? What do you think is coming out next? Um, and should I run a contest? I might run a VR giveaway contest in the next uh, couple of weeks. So if you have thoughts about that or you want to participate or thoughts about anything else, please leave them below. And uh, thanks for watching.